In this video, I'm going to go through the questions on differentiation with maxima and minima. If you wish to try the questions first, you can find a link to those in this video's description. So for this first question, we need to find d2y by dx squared. To do that, we'll differentiate to get dy by dx. If you differentiate 2x cubed, you get 6x squared. And if you differentiate negative 4x squared, you get negative 8x. Now to find d2y by dx squared, we differentiate dy by dx. So to differentiate 6x squared, you get 12x. And if you differentiate negative 8x, you get negative 8. So the answer is 12x take 8. We need to do the same thing for this next question, but I'm going to rewrite 2 over x as 2x to the power negative 1. So we'll do dy by dx first. If you differentiate 2x to the power negative 1, you get negative 2x to the power negative 2. And if you differentiate plus 9x, you get plus 9. Now to do d2y by dx squared, we'll differentiate what we got for dy by dx. Negative 2x to the power negative 2 will differentiate to give 4x to the power negative 3. And since 9's a constant, that will differentiate to give 0. So our answer is 4x to the power negative 3, which you could write in a fraction form 4 over x cubed. For this question, we need to find the value of d2y by dx squared when x is equal to 2. So let's work out d2y by dx squared first. Once again, we're going to rewrite this fraction 4 over x as 4x to the power negative 1. So dy by dx, if you differentiate x to the power 5, you get 5x to the power 4. And differentiating 4x to the power negative 1 gives you negative 4x to the power negative 2. Then if we differentiate this, we'll get d2y by dx squared. So 5x to the 4 differentiates to give 20x to the power 3. And negative 4x to the negative 2 gives you positive 8x to the power negative 3 which you could rewrite in a fraction form as 8 over x cubed. Now we need to find the value of this when x is equal to 2, so we're going to substitute 2 in. So at x equals 2, d2y by dx squared would be 20 lots of 2 cubed plus 8 over 2 cubed. Now 2 cubed is 8, so 20 times 8 is 160, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. So we get 160 add 1, which is 161. In this question, we're looking for the coordinates of a stationary point. Remember, we have a stationary point when dy by dx equals 0. So let's find dy by dx first. If you differentiate x to the power 4, you get 4x to the power 3. And differentiating negative 32x gives you negative 32. And we need this to equal 0. So 4x cubed minus 32 equals 0. Add 32 to both sides, and you'll get 4x cubed equals 32. Divide both sides by 4, and you'll get x cubed equals 8 and then cube root both sides and you'll get x equals 2. So we found the x coordinate, but we also need the y coordinate. We'll find this by substituting our x value back into the equation of the graph. So at x equals 2, y would equal x to the power 4, so 2 to the power 4, take away 32x, so take away 32 times 2. 2 to the power 4 is just 16, and 32 times 2 is 64, so take 64, and 16 take 64 is negative 48. So we found the stationary point, it has x coordinate 2 and y coordinate negative 48, so it's 2, negative 48. We need to find the coordinates of two stationary points this time. Again, dy by dx must equal 0 at stationary points, so let's find dy by dx first. If you differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared, and if you differentiate plus 3x squared, you get plus 6x. And this needs to equal 0, so 3x squared plus 6x equals 0. To solve this one, you can factorise 3x out, so you get 3x, x plus 2 equals 0, which gives you two solutions. The first 3x equals 0 gives you x equals 0, and then x plus 2 equals 0 gives you x equals negative 2. So there are two stationary points for this curve. We now need the y coordinate, so we'll substitute each of these back into the original equation of the curve. So let's start with x equals 0. At x equals 0, y would equal 0 cubed plus 3 lots of 0 squared. 0 cubed is 0, and 3 lots of 0 squared is also 0, and 0 add 0 is 0. Now the other point when x equals negative 2, then y would equal negative 2 cubed plus 3 lots of negative 2 squared. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and 3 lots of negative 2 squared gives you positive 12. Negative 8 add 12 gives you 4. So we found the coordinates. The first one has x equals 0 and y equals 0, so that's 0, 0. And the next one, x equals negative 2, y equals 4, so negative 2, 4. For this question, we need to show that y has a minimum when x equals 3. 
if y is indeed a minimum, then it's a stationary point, so we need to show that dy by dx equals 0. And when it's a minimum point, d2y by dx squared is greater than 0. So we need to show both of these things. If you go to the equation of the curve, we're going to rewrite 18 over x in a negative index form, so 18x to the power negative 1. So to find dy by dx, we would do negative 1 times 18, so negative 18, and then x to the power negative 2, and the plus 2x will differentiate to give plus 2. Now we also need to know d2y by dx squared, so let's work this out too. We do negative 2 times negative 18, which is a positive 36, and reduce the power down to negative 3. And of course the 2 is a constant, so that will differentiate to give 0. Now that we've got these two expressions, let's rewrite them back in a fractional form. So the negative 18, x to the power negative 2, could be written as negative 18 over x squared. And the 36, x to the power negative 3, could be written as 36 over x cubed. So we'll first of all show that dy by dx equals 0 when x equals 3. To do this, we'll just substitute x equals 3 in. So at x equals 3, dy by dx equals negative 18 over 3 squared plus 2. Now 3 squared is just 9, and 18 over 9 is 2, so it's negative 2 plus 2, which of course does equal 0. So we've shown that it is indeed a stationary point. We now need to show that it's a minimum point. To do this, we need to show d2y by dx squared is greater than 0. So at x equals 3, d2y by dx squared is 36 over 3 cubed. Now 3 cubed is just 27, and you can divide both of these by 9 to get 4 over 3. Now that's positive, it's greater than 0, therefore it is a minimum point. For this final question, we need to find the coordinates of two stationary points. If we have a stationary point, dy by dx must equal 0. So let's work out dy by dx. If you differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared. Differentiate 12x squared, you get plus 24x. Differentiate 36x is plus 36. And the 1 will differentiate to give 0. So this must be equal to 0. There's a common factor of 3 here, so we could divide by 3 on both sides. So we get x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. And we can factorise this. This will give two solutions. So x plus 6, x plus 2 equals 0. And then the first bracket gives you x equals negative 6. And the second bracket, x equals negative 2. So we found the x coordinates of the two stationary points. We also need the y coordinates. To do this, we'll substitute the x values back into the equation of the curve. So at x equals negative 6, y will equal negative 6 cubed plus 12 lots of negative 6 squared plus 36 lots of negative 6 plus 1. Negative 6 cubed is equal to negative 216. If you do 12 lots of negative 6 squared, you end up with plus 432, and 36 times negative 6 is negative 216. Now all of this here actually cancels out and gives you 0, so we just get a y value of 1. So we have the coordinates of our first stationary point, negative 6, 1. Now we need to do the other, so at x equals negative 2, y would equal negative 2 cubed, plus 12 lots of negative 2 squared, plus 36 lots of negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. 12 times negative 2 squared gives you positive 48. 36 times negative 2 is going to give you negative 72. And if you simplify all of this, you'll get negative 31. So the coordinates of the other stationary point are negative 2, negative 31. Now we haven't finished the question. We also need to determine their nature. To do this, we need to calculate d2y by dx squared. We'll do this by differentiating dy by dx. So if you differentiate 3x squared, you get 6x. If you differentiate 24x, you get plus 24. And if you differentiate 36, you get 0. Now that we've found this, if we substitute in the x coordinates of our two stationary points, we can see their nature. So let's start with x equals negative 6. So 6 lots of negative 6 plus 24. 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. And if you add 24, you get negative 12. Now this is less than 0. If d2y by dx squared is less than 0 at a stationary point, we know we have a maximum. Now let's do the other one. So x equals negative 2 this time, so 6 lots of negative 2 plus 24. Well, 6 lots of negative 2 is negative 12. If you add 24 to that, you get positive 12. This time, d2y by dx squared is greater than 0 at our stationary point, so it must be a minimum. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out what I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.